inside dish on Washington's power lease? Well, my next guest has. She has the capital connections. Please welcome Karen Fell. Nice to see you, John. Nice to see you again. Now, you know everything in Washington. We were talking backstage, and you told me the ultimate perk you think is what? Well, the ultimate perk in Washington traditionally has been a car and a driver. Because, I mean, driving in Washington with all the traffic and all the circles and getting stuck in presidential motorcades is really a hassle. But when Bill came in and took over in January, he decided that he was going to cut that. And only the people that really need it for national security reasons now have cars and drivers. And he cut out all the sort of drivers that pick you up at your house and take you to work and that kind of thing. Right, right. So they're, you know, so going to have really, to live without that. The ultimate perk really now is a car and driver because it really shows your importance. That's right. That's only high level. But a lot of White House staffers decided that they should have some perks too, or at least trade on the idea that they work in the White House. So they, and of course, Clinton likes to play golf all the time. So some of his staff people thought they could get away with calling one of the most exclusive private country clubs in Washington, Congressional Country Club, and seeing, and of course it's members only, seeing if they could come in and, uh, you know, get a tea time. Right. One afternoon in the summer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they threw the way to the White House around. So finally the manager agreed to let them come. And, of course, they showed up on Clinton time, which was a few hours late, which didn't please anybody <laughs> on a busy day. And they came and, you know, sort of cut off jeans and no golf shoes and uh -huh. ran up a huge tab for burgers and left everybody a little bit unhappy. So needless to say, they're looking for another golf course to terrorize. But a lot of this is because so many of the staffers now are very young. And in fact, for a lot of them, it's the first summer they haven't gone to summer camp, and instead they're working at the White House. <laughs> so some of them are wearing this T-shirt now, which was made, which says Camp Clinton. Oh, that's funny. Can you see that? And the White House, yeah, and it's got Bill there, and it says Chief on his T-shirt. That's can very that. cute. Yeah, so I brought you this T-shirt. Thank you. Know, you didn't have summer camp to go to either. You, know you worked all summer. I'll exercise it. Thank you very much. That's right. And what about Hill? What's she up to? Well, Hillary is really, of course, she's working on her health care plan. Yeah. And part of this is preventative health care, so that low-fat foods in diet is very important. So she's trying to get the White House chef to, like, grill instead of fry foods and do, you know, baby greens instead of vicious flying beef well-intended steak dinners. And, I was going to say, and will she do that in steak dinners too? Well, I think so. So far, she's only had these small dinners, and they have served, you know, your traditional sort of French food that they serve at the White House, and they did serve beef well-intended one and heavier things. But when the first state dinner comes up this fall, I think we can expect grilled chicken, grilled fish, you know, salads, a lot of veggies. Is that and upsetting to people backstage in the White House in the kitchen and stuff? Um, well, what they try and do, I mean, it's certainly different for them. And I guess any time a first lady comes in and sets some rules, you know, they're going to have to modify it and come up with some new recipes. But traditionally, the White House kitchen staff, as well as the White House staff, tries to please the president and first lady. For example, after LBJ had his heart attack, they made his favorite dessert, which is tapioca, without eggs and <laughs> using skim milk. Right. So, so, you know, they'll figure out something healthy for Bill. And she's been watching his weight anyway all along. Now, what about problems with the White House mail? Well, they came in and they cut, uh, they did a lot of staff cuts. And that was one of his campaign promises. And they fired a lot of people in the correspondence office. So what's happened is that the mail has really piled up. And they tried to get volunteers in to answer it. They even had some women lawyers that volunteered one day that came in, and a bunch of students. But what happened with the students was, is as they looked at some of the postcards going out, there were all these outrageous and embarrassing things written on them. So they tried to get them out of the mailroom before they ended up, you know, in the hands of. So they would write like funny things, funny or not so nice things if they didn't agree with, you know, an issue and all. You mean if somebody wrote like, "I think you're wrong on healthcare," they would write back. Yeah, well, well you're going to have more words and some other things. Really? Sure, it's really, you know, X-rated kinds of graffiti on them and other very um, opinionated yeah. kinds of things. So that isn't great because people just come in and volunteer and they weren't really screened. Right. Now, the other problem is that the mail was piled up in the quarters of the old executive office building. And the fire marshals came in and said, you know, you can't just leave it here. It wasn't getting answered. So they shipped it off in laundry carts. And it's now sitting down at the Navy Yard unopened in laundry carts. It's crazy. There's bags of it. So now they've hired an outside firm, a computer software firm, to answer some of it, which is also kind of unprecedented. So but I think that yeah, pen pals are going to have to wait. Will that know? be cheaper than keeping the staff they fired? In I mean, the long run, who knows? You know, it's just juggling. They've got to get, you know, but they're overwhelmed. Even Sox gets more than 50 letters a week. Oh my God. <laughs> what about last thing, strange congressional gifts? You said you were telling us. Well, if you ever wanted to give a gift to your congressman, I don't know if you do, but just remember they always have to declare them. Now, some of them have gotten outrageous things, like one guy got a wet tune shower radio, and he had to put it on his floor. 
I'm not going to deer repellent. Like, there's a lot of deer running around the Capitol. <laughs> but the best thing was the Major League Baseball Association this summer gave every member of Congress two tickets to the All-Star Game, which was a big deal, except that one congressman was not such a baseball fan and got the great idea to scalp his tickets. And he sold them for $1,000 a piece in the congressional box. So that was a little tacky. That's tacky. That's Very tacky. tacky. Well, think of some more tacky stuff. So next time I see you, you have right. more tacky. <laughs> Only tacky. We'll do an old tag show in Washington. Yeah. I thank you very much. Thank and you. next.